What's going on guys, Tosker here, and in this video, uh, it's gonna be pretty quick hopefully. All we're going to do is this ugly little is favorite checkbox that we have. Uh, we're gonna get rid of this. We're still gonna have a checkbox, but we're gonna customize it ourselves. Now what we're gonna do here is have an image uh, of a star, and uh, when the checkbox is unchecked, it's just gonna be a bordered star with an empty middle. When we hover it, we want it to be half filled, so we know that uh, we're hovering it and then when we click it it's going to be a solid star. Now to get started with this we're just going to go over here to our app.xaml and we're going to go over here. One thing I did want to mention uh, we have a edit box basically to replace our text box like for the uh, edit control that we made or the edit mode rather. Now this is a little different and requires more explanation and it'll go beyond the scope of this series so uh, you can get the code in the description or pause the video and copy this. I recommend getting the code in the description. But I didn't want to leave you completely hanging so in the code are comments to links where you can read about certain parts of this if you're unsure. However we're going to now move on to our favorite checkbox. So we're going to scroll down. It's going to be quite large. And the first thing we're going to do is create a style here. We're going to give it a key and we're just going to call this favorite checkbox going to get the target type with an X type of checkbox and close this tag off. Now what we want to do is change the template of the checkbox control. So we're going to get the setter and we're going to target the property template. Open and close that. We then want to get the set rather the setter value. Now within this we want to set up a control template. We also want to set this target type here. So X type checkbox and close that. So now what we want to do is actually create the uh, initial content of the control. So the content presenter and this will just be composed of a stack panel. Uh, we'll give it a orientation of horizontal. And then in here we're going to have an image control. We want to give this control a name because we later want to be able to access this actual image element. We're going to call it checkbox image. We then want to access the source property, which we'll later get to, and we'll give it a width of let's say 32. Now what we want to do next is click our image here, our image uh, control, and we want to go down here to our properties and go under common and find source. Now the original state of our uh, favorite checkbox is going to be an unchecked star. So back over here to the code, we see that it sets the image source. Now after our image, uh, anytime we're actually setting the template or the presenter, we need to add in the content presenter. So we can just close that off. Now after this is where we get to the fun part. What we want to do here is actually set up some triggers so we can change certain elements under certain conditions. So we want to access the control template triggers. Close that off. We then want the first trigger which is only going to require one condition and that's whether or not this is uh, the checkbox is checked. So we're going to get trigger, access the property of is checked and this trigger will activate if the value of the is checked property is true. And then if this is the case, we're going to call the setter target name checkbox image. So what we're doing here is setting the target name so we're targeting this image uh, that we named earlier. We then want to access the property of that element and that property we want to access is the source property and then we want to get the value here. Close that off. Uh, for the value I'm just going to copy this. I'm going to paste and we want this to be the checked star image. Now next we want to be able to detect a hover but we only want the hover to change the element if it is also not checked. So in this case we're going to have to use a multi trigger. Close that off want to set the multi-trigger uh, conditions. Close that off. And within here we want the first condition to be on the property is mouse over. 
And if that value is true, then that's one condition that needs to be met. And then another will be the property is checked and we want this value to be false. So we only want this multi-trigger to go off if the mouse is over and it, the element is, or the control rather, is not also checked. So then if those conditions are met, we want the setter target name like we did above. We want to target the checkbox image. We want the property source and then the value which again we can just copy paste here and then do a hover star so what we're going to do here is we're going to go over here to our details view going to go down here to our xaml we're going to find our checkbox and get rid of the content here because we no longer need it and then we're going to add in the style that we created. Favorite checkbox. We then want to bind the is checked property here to the selected contact that is favorite. And then we, uh, because we don't want to have to be in edit mode, uh, we want to set up a command here so we can save it. So we'll do the save command. Now there is going to be a problem with this. If we go over here to our context view model, and we look down here at our save command, we'll see that we have an is edit. So can execute will only be if it's in edit mode, but we just said that we wanted to do it when it wasn't in edit mode. So basically our checkbox won't work right now. Now one thing we could do is we could just create an update command here. And then in here, we could just do a data service save. And of course, add in our contacts. Now we're gonna have a couple problems here. Uh, one problem is we need to go back over here to our details view. Uh, we're gonna go down here and we need to change our command binding to the update command. However, going back here to our contacts view model, uh, we are going to have a bigger problem. Now the problem we have here is now that we have a favorites and a normal list, um, when we are in the favorites listing and we save, we're going to overwrite all of our other contacts. I'm going to run the application and show you what I'm talking about. Okay, so here's our application and we can, let's say, select John Doe. And now it's saved. And then we can go over here to our favorites. And we see we have John Doe. We can go back and we still have Jane Doe there. However, if we go over here to favorites and let's say we either edit him or now I decide I don't want him to be in the favorites anymore. Now if I go back over to contacts and I go to favorites, he's gone. And if I go back to contacts, we have him, but now Jane Doe is gone. And that's because we are in the favorite listing and we saved. We only saved, we overwrote all of our contacts with the new list we had in our favorites. So back here in our contacts view model, there is one way we can handle this. Um, I'm not sure if I really like it but for now we're gonna stick with it and so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go up here above our uh, observable collection we're gonna create a private enumerable contact and we're gonna call this underscore contacts and now when we create our contacts view model what we're going to do instead is we're going to automatically go to our data service and get our contacts and now that we did that, we're going to update everywhere we save our contacts. We're going to save the entire listing. Now because we're getting contacts from the same collection, uh, even though we get it down here also at load contacts, we're still getting the same instantiated ones. The only difference is, is here, all we're doing is loading contacts into the observable collection, specific ones from the same collection, that we already have above here. So here's our application. Uh, we got our contacts list. Going to favorite John Doe. He's over here in our favorites now. Uh, we're gonna untick him. Go back to our contacts and we still have all of our contact data. And just to make sure there's nothing else, let's favorite him again. Let's go over here. Let's see if we go into edit mode and if we change something and then save. Now we go over here in our contacts, 
and okay. So everything seems to be still working good.